working uh, was working as an analytical chemist when she launched uh, Sidebabe as a side project, which uh, what started as a hobby for passion and fun turned into a full-time job after a few viral successes. With an academic background in forensics and toxicology, a sharp BS detector, and a big dose of humor, she's taken a brand of science communication to make science more relatable and accessible in a social media landscape of misinformation. Everyone, give a round of applause as we welcome Metro Chumon. I can also touch my tongue to my nose, so there. <laughs> one, of, one of many skills I offer. It's totally why my husband just married me. I kid. Anyways, it's my, my other opener is generally, that was such a wonderful introduction for someone who tells people they're full of shit for a living. Oh. So moving on. Uh, well, thank you guys for coming to hang out with me on a, on a, on a Wednesday. Jeez, you guys are a good crap. Oh, wait, hold on. We're, we're aspect ratioing. We're, 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 this is fake news. All of it now. My dog is not fake news. Anyways, we're getting there. We're getting there. This is skeptic dog. Even my dog is skeptical. He's, he's giving you the skeptic look. Anyways, I'm clearly, I'm not the first woman on Mars, but Mars is on me. Ah, that, that joke just happened right now. You're, you're witnessing joke in, in, in real time. Moving on. Uh, but yeah, uh, normally I talk about bullshit detection. Today we're talking about fake news, which is kind of a little different. This is more focusing on, on media uh, stuff. But the first time I gave this talk uh, was on the day after uh, April Fool's Day, which does anybody know uh, what day that is? But, but it's, this, is, this is true, but uh, the day after uh, 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 April 1st um, is International Fact-Checking Day. <laughs> Do you guys know how I know that? No, I fact-checked it. <laughs> it's, but uh, full, it's something that PolitiFact did uh, starting last year because we do seem to be living in a fact uh, deficient uh, era. Uh, and as, as skeptics know, uh, inter uh, April Fool's Day is kind of uh, the one day of the year when everybody else treats the internet kind of the way that I treat it every day. Because no matter what, I see somebody make a claim, make a factual or a kind of factual statement, and I look at it and go, really? <laughs> Do you have a citation for that? My birthday is July 7th, 1972. Really? Do you have a <laughs> Do you have a citation? for that no I mean I'm not I'm not that bad yet but I want to see that there are some you know there's some factual basis for the shit that's being slung on the internet every day and I have good reason for it I have a little bit of a of a history so we're gonna we're gonna delve into something really important now me uh, not not really moving on so here's kind of the hold on a second we're just gonna pretend that we can see the top line of everything so Here's a, a little bit of the backstory on me. So I've got, have a little bit of a strange uh, academic background. I have bachelor's degrees in chemistry and theater, as you do. Uh, be chemistry because I wanted a, a, a career in theater because daddy didn't hug me enough. Uh, it's, that one always gets laughter into, into sighing, like, oh, it's, you know, don't worry, it's, it's just life. Uh, and then I got a master's degree in forensics, you know, as, as one does, because I wanted to know where to hide the bodies. Um, but then I went on to work in academia for a year, uh, worked in toxicology, I, I stud uh, studied explosive scatter for, uh, for a government uh, contractor for a little while, uh, worked in drug analysis, uh, then most recently, uh, before doing this full time, in pesticide analysis. Uh, but, and Sybabe kind of started on, as we said, on a whim. Uh, but then uh, it's went on to, as, as I like to call it, uh, this was, there was a dark side of BS detection, because as we can see, I'm very good at gesturing to things on a screen. See, it's a very good, it's, it's a good hobby. Uh, but there was something that came before that, because I kind of felt that, how, how does one get very good at detecting fake news? By falling for all of it. Because I didn't just wake up one day and go, ah, I'm good at telling you when things are full of shit. I had to be full of shit myself at some point. Uh, but there was a way that this all happened. And I like to, to start this by asking people, uh, what's the longest headache you've ever had in your life? 
most people when I ask this question, the longest I tend to get for an answer, has anyone had a headache last longer than two weeks? Anyone? No one in this room? It's, I'm, I'm very, I'm happy for you that no one's raising your hand. Uh, I have had a headache since March 7th of 2010. And this isn't a joke about my new husband. Uh, <laughs> it's only met him three years ago. Uh, and he's, he's not a headache, he's wonderful. But I, uh, I have a trigeminal nerve headache on the left side of my head. Now, a lot of times, and this is something I've seen, I've seen quite a bit. Uh, you'll see people in the alternative medicine and the kind of, you know, the phobia of everything that we don't understand community trying to prey on people who have difficult to treat conditions. And that's what happened to me. Uh, I got this really horrible headache that, you know, these types of headaches take a while to figure out uh, what's, you know, what's wrong with you, how to treat it. The medications, you know, you have to figure out which meds to, you know, cram into your system, which ones don't make you feel worse than the actual headache itself. Uh, but it took about a year to figure out. And in that time, I'm like, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's something in the food supply. Maybe it's the fat on my thighs that's causing the pain in my face. Uh, you know, and it's like I lost about 90 pounds in that period of time, which, you know, that it's that it was something that needed to go. If I had 90 pounds to lose, then that's it's no great uh, accomplishment to, 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 you know, for that. It was something that that was effect, might have been affecting other things in my health, too. But um, the thing is, it was very easy to make somebody who was in a lot of pain very paranoid about everything that I didn't understand. And that's why I look at the people who fall for some uh, some very strange things that I debunk, like uh, like myths about GMOs and pesticides and other things like this, and go, I understand you, I feel you. Because I was at a point where I was going up and down the aisles at, at the stores going, ah, I can't pronounce this, it must be killing me right now. Uh, and eventually, uh, I worked at a pesticide company analyzing bulk quantities of pesticides and it wasn't giving me a headache. <laughs> I was like, you know, if this, if these tiny quantities in the food supply are what's killing me or what's causing my headache, surely something at this factory uh, would have would have just destroyed me by now. But you know, a little bit of skepticism will will get you a long way, and a little bit of knowledge will get you even further. But it did take me falling for everything to realize the people who do fall for it. Uh, they're not stupid. They just got some bad information uh, when they were vulnerable. But it did make me very good at reading through my first bit of fake news. Uh, bad nutrition headlines. Oh, these are. Now I know we think about fake news uh, as being, you know, something that's political, something that's, you know, something that's in Trump Sylvania. Uh, but I see it as, as first and foremost, uh, being something that that's hit. You know, it, it hits in, in very little. In, in little uh, auspicious ways, but this is these are two of my favorites, Thir and these two go together. Uh, 30 foods you should never eat after age 30, and 10 simple ways to turn your meal into an aphrodisiac. Some foods were on both lists. <laughs> I, I, not, if, if you're closer up, you can see I'm starting to get some wrinkles. I am a woman in my 30s. Are they telling me that I am all dried up? What are they saying to me, huh? I don't know what to do with my life. Uh, but moving on, 20 best and worst gas station foods for weight loss. Now this, again, what does all of this do for a consumer who's just trying to figure out what to eat? Like there are, there are articles that will tell you just eat, um, you know, buy from the outer aisles at the grocery store. The gas station is the inner aisles. They're the checkout station. They're not exactly where you're shopping for weight loss. Uh, 23 worst food additives in America. There are places, there are people, the food babe, who will tell you not to eat any food additives. And really, if it's in your food, didn't you just add it all? All in. I'm just just saying, just playing with the language a little. Uh, nine reasons a juice cleanse will work in your favor. Now, I plucked all of these out of one aggregate site that rhymes with SHMMSN uh, in one week. One week. Previously, they had run my article uh, on, uh, on why juice cleanses are bullshit. <laughs> so what's a consumer who's just trying to figure out what's healthy and how they should run their diet? What are they supposed to think? Uh, and this one I love, six foods thin women eat every day. I guarantee you, you get a group of, and again, marketing tends to go for food towards women. Uh, it's why, I guarantee you, if you get a group of, of women, of thin women into a room and ask them what they eat every day, 
day, there's not going to be the same food on all their lists. My previous roommate, uh, 23 years old, just a tiny little bit of a thing, lived on McDonald's. You can't explain it. Sometimes it's just how it works. And uh, if you had to eat one, one superfood every day, which would you choose? Superfoods aren't a thing. That's a marketing term. But this uh, just kind of drives home the point that there's not a, uh, there's not a, a real uh, good basis for people to understand uh, n uh, nutrition based on headlines. It's a lot of fake news, and we have a little bit of, as I like to call it, a Google machine problem. Because people go looking for good information, and that's where they get bad information. Like, how many people have wanted to know, uh, you know, if there's anything wrong with the vaccines? And they go hunting uh, for, uh, you know, for, for va information on vaccines. And they're like, you know, I just want to be reassured that they're safe. And instead, the top 10 search results, if you want to, it's, I'm sure you all have your phone set to silent, but if you want to take out your phones right now, it's okay. You can look away from me for a minute. I'm going to get annoying after about an hour. But, you know, go ahead, look at, look at vaccines, look at GMOs, look at what the top 10 search results look, uh, look like. If you're someone who's suspicious of these, you're going to find what you want to find in the top 10 search results. If you type in sugar is toxic, you're going to get all results that say sugar is toxic. If you want to type in any chemical that you don't understand and write the words is toxic, toxic afterwards, oh, you're going to find information that it's toxic. It might not be accurate, but you'll find it, and it's hard to tell what a trusted source of information looks like. I mean, hell, if you don't know that that's not how GMO is made, maybe sticking the science liquid in it is how the GMO is made. That's, who knows what those wonderful people at Monsanto are up to after all, because of course we all know everything on the internet is true. Abraham Lincoln said it. He, he is all about the rump shaking, after all. Saw that in a movie once. But I mean, I don't just say this because I want a cheap laugh, which, which I do. Uh, I say this because there is a bit of a problem with people trusting things on the internet. I mean, it's, I, and I have, a, I have a bit of a story with this. It's shameful. It's very shameful. So I've said for a while, or, or I've said this to, to my boyfriend for a while, sorry, husband. It's been, it's been 10 days. I'm still getting used to this. Uh, it's it's going to take a little while. It's like, oh, that's a new sparkly thing. Where'd that come from? Anyways, uh, so <laughs> there's a, uh, I figure, how many times have you, you know, been told stories in your life that you just figure, you know, no, no adult would have told me this when I was a kid and it would have been a lie? Or how many times have you, did you read a, a forward at the beginning of the, you know, beginning of the internet when, you know, things were just being passed around and this kind of became a part of your brain and this is something you didn't question. And then years later, you're like, I wonder if those were all true. I told a whopper of one <laughs> to my husband the other day, and I was like, and he looked at me and said, when did you get so good at deadpan? <laughs> because there are things, <laughs> there, were, there was a thing on the internet that I just kind of bought into a long time ago, and it became a part of my, uh, of the things that I thought were true in my brain, because everything on the internet was true a long time ago for me. Uh, it was, has anyone heard this old wives tale about daddy long legs being the most dangerous spider, but they just couldn't bite you because their fangs were too small? And, oh yeah, I heard that one when I was a little kid and just never made its way out of my brain. It might have been when I was a little kid, it might have been like early on in the internet, there was a forward, I don't remember which one it was, but it was an era when I wasn't questioning things and I hadn't kicked it out of my brain yet. Everything on the internet was true. And I said this to my husband and looked at me and said, you're really awful at deadpan. When did you get good at it? But again, you have to question things on the internet, not just because this slide is ridiculous, but because we all know it was Marilyn Monroe that said it. <laughs> but I, I, do, I do this not just because I want the, uh, the, cheap, the, the cheap laughter, but because I wanted to prove uh, my psychic powers to you guys. I, it's, I, I did say I was going to sneak in a Rick roll. I wasn't lying. <laughs> But I do, th I do these two slides for, for another reason, because every once in a while, I do uh, want to prove to people that I have psychic powers. I, I hope that you guys are okay with this. Um, I know that we are debunkers and we don't believe in anything like this, but I, I just, I, I hope you're all right with the fact that the next slide is, I predicted your reactions to the last two slides. I hope you're okay with this. <sighs> and, and also, also, for the free little bit of, of sex work, you can all Venmo me 1495. Moving on. 
So what constitutes uh, fake news? Go ahead, you can shout them out a little bit at me. I put a lot of different things under the categories of fake news because first we kind of have to define the term because you know there's, there's just general bullshit, there's stuff that makes its way to the mainstream media. I put a lot of different things under there. Uh, clickbait, satire, basically anything that uh, contributes to uh, the public uh, misunderstanding of what's real. Uh, do you guys consider uh, both accidental and purposeful uh, miscommunication of information, fake news. Good call. We're going to get into those because there are different ways that you can commu uh, communicate information uh, inaccurately and have and still have it reflect to people that something or wrong information. But more, just as importantly, what's not fake news? It's not fake news just because it's inconvenient to your narrative. Now, this is something that we do have to be careful about. Uh, and I'm not just saying it because it's fun to pick on 45, uh, but because sometimes we do fall into the trap of being like, this, do you know, this doesn't uh, jive with what I think about reality. Uh, this, is, you know, this is BS because, I, uh, because it doesn't uh, line up with evidence I've seen before. We have to remember, we have to take into account new evidence sometimes. But just because something is, uh, <laughs> just because something's new to us doesn't mean it's necessarily false. So remember, uh, there's you know difference between you know fake and inconvenient. But moving on, let's get on to my, as I like to call them, my 10 rules uh, for surviving fake news. F first off, learn to recognize a biased source. So I love this story. Uh, Liberal Society and Conservative 101, they, they were kind of caught, I think it was by BuzzFeed of all places, uh, producing these news stories that looked like all they did was take them and change a few words, both in the title and through the body of the, uh, of the articles, just to make people, just to, to incite a little bit of anger on either side of the aisle with a, uh, I mean, with, with the article on Kellyanne Conway, it was, I don't know if you can see it towards the back, White House finally gives Kellyanne Conway the boot, are you glad? White House just gave Kellyanne Conway the boot, prepare to be infuriated. Like, it is so easy to put in, just change those li few little words here or there to trigger a little bit of outrage depending on who you're writing for. So this is, you know, very clearly, uh, on both sides of this, a very biased source of information. So if you're trying to make sure that you're getting good information, look to look for signs that they're that they're feeding you a bi a, a bit of bias. Because even if they're even if it's biased towards what you want to hear, that's not really a great way to get your news. You want to make sure that you're able to think about the information and process it on your own. Because you know it's. As much as I could listen to Rachel Maddow all day long, no, not really. Um, like, like I'm on her side, but I don't want her telling me how to think. And I think that's an important thing to remember uh, when you're getting your news. Uh, but that's, that, that's an important thing to remember. So uh, look for some signs that your source is biased. Loaded language, uh, like the bits of, of uh, things that we saw in Liberal Society and Conservative 101, telling you, you know, are you infuriated? Uh, calling, instead of calling the mainstream media, the, uh, the liberal media was one of the things in the Conservative 101. Uh, you know, stories that are made to fit an agenda. Uh, it's, there was, uh, from being a journalist, I've seen things like this. I was writing an article on, uh, on vaccines and it was for, <laughs> this was back when I, when I was just starting out as a writer, it was for a conservative rag. Uh, and they had, I'd written, there was one line and they were talking about that somebody had, uh, somebody had compared vaccines to the Tuskegee, uh, to, to the experiments done at Tuskegee. My, I didn't realize what was going to be done with my writing uh, at a conservative rag. I should have looked into this a little bit more. Uh, they looked up who had written it and they tried to make it sound like there was a huge outcry about vaccines within the black and Muslim community. I'm like, well, that was, that was new. I didn't expect that. I pulled my writing from that site. Uh, but you know, things that pull uh, the writing towards one direction or the other and that don't represent facts, sometimes they don't come from the author, sometimes uh, they really, really distort the information that's going on and try to uh, mismatch the, the events and the facts. That's a way you can tell that you're looking at a biased source. But 
Uh, next up, when a bias source agrees with your worldview, you have to question it a little bit. And it's like, again, as much as, 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 much as there are places that I enjoy the stories from, I always try to go through, and you'll see this pretty often, uh, with you know, with places that that you know are are gearing their information towards you. Like I, back when back when I just discovered that there were places like 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 the Daily Coast and all of these sites, I was like, oh wow, there are things that are that are that are making me angry all the time. Why why isn't this being covered in the mainstream? And then I'd click the links from which they got their information, and I'm like. This doesn't match what they said at all. <laughs> this is, you know, there was a thread of information that was that was similar, but it was like they were pulling it as far away from the actual source of information as they possibly could without breaking it. So even if something agrees with you, go find the source of the information and don't, you know, and, and try to see uh, what the primary source is before just, you know, letting it get you mad all the time because it's. Uh, well, how to phrase this nicely, in the Trump era, that's no way to live. You, there's not enough clonopin in the beta to, to supply us all. Uh, but uh, there's, there's another thing to be said for the fact that we are very, very good uh, at keeping information uh, in that, 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 um, that supports our worldview. So I've, I've had the, uh, it's how many, how many of you have seen, um, and, and I've seen this a few times, how many of us have seen a news feed on Facebook that's very, very dissimilar from our own? Some of us, how many of us have only seen news feeds that look a lot like our own? It's, we've, so it's like we're used to seeing things within our, within our bubble, and that's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with looking at information that, you know, that pleases you. There's nothing wrong with looking at information that, uh, that you want to look at, but remember, the more and more you curate, and the more and more you try to keep sources that are just geared towards you, the less you see information that's going to people that you disagree with, and the less you're going to see uh, how they think. Which, as much as you don't want to be converted, as much as you might not want to be converted over to thinking like that, you do. It does benefit you to see at least the information that's coming out without too much uh, editorializing. So remember filtering a lot of information away from you um, and not going outside of your newsfeed because a lot of us do get information from our Facebook news feeds and from our Twitter feeds. Uh, the more you filter, the less you see the world outside of you. So good things to keep in mind uh, when you're trying to figure out what's real and what's fake. Uh, let's see, back and over to this. I love this story. Viral is, is a lot of fun. Viral stories are eye-catching, but sometimes they're kind of fake news. Uh, did anybody remember this? Oh yes, the uh, co what happens to you after an hour after drinking a can of Coke? Uh, mainly just sugar and caffeine is is the is the real uh, deal. But you know the first ten, like you know your pupils are dilating and you're and you you barely don't vomit up the Coke because of all the sugar and the phosphoric acid is doing the. <sighs> The place that they got this from was a website called The Renegade Pharmacist. Uh, and I don't even know if the guy's a real pharmacist. There was, there was a lot missing from this. But one of the interesting parts of this, it should have made people you know, pay a little attention to the fact that this was just crap, uh, was that he said, um, the only thing that stops you from throwing up is the amount of, of you know, because of how much sugar there is, uh, is that there's phosphoric acid in it. I'm like, wait, everyone that I know has downed a bunch of pixie sticks, and that's just all sugar. <laughs> how many people here have, have oh, let me rephrase this, because nobody wants to admit to eating sugar, because that's the devil. Uh, how many people here have a friend who has had a ton of sugar at some point in your life? <laughs> Real sugar has been banned from the Bay Area. Heaven forbid, you all, you're all on agave nectar or something here. Whew. Uh, but here's the thing. Like, there were so many things in here that had, like, a little bit of truth. And, you know, and it, it's easy to sell something that's really scary, especially when it's about something like Coca-Cola that we all know we shouldn't be downing by the gallons. We should all be downing Diet Coke, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but just, I have... 
Diet Pepsi's the devil. Uh, Diet Coke is wonderful. I'm kidding. Anyways, uh, but uh, that's the thing. It's we're already suspicious of it. We know that if we drink too much of it, it's not gonna you know it's not gonna fill you up with vitamin C and all the things you need to to live a, a healthy, well balanced diet. You shouldn't drink tons of it. But one thing of it, uh, if it's within your caloric uh, allowance isn't as bad as they made it out to be, but this went viral because it look, it's so pretty, it's nice and scary, and it's talking about something that you're already pretty sure is bad for you. Not a fact to be found though, but uh, what about stories that someone knows is fabricated? Because this one, <laughs> this one went nice and viral too. Does anyone remember this story? Oh yeah, lots of lots of nods. I love uh, the the scientist slash journalist who did this, John Bohan, and he is great. So the thing about this one is there are still some people who believe it, who didn't get the didn't get the memo <laughs> that it was a fake story. So what they did was uh, they they did a study with I think about 20 people uh, and said, all right, we're gonna get some useful data out of this somehow. You know the way that some scientists actually do their work, uh, and they figured. They, you know, they did one group that was low-carb dieters and one group that was low-carb di carb dieters with a little bit of chocolate in their diets. And just magically, it worked out for them. The low-carb dieters, lost with, with a bit of chocolate, lost a little more weight. They're like, ah, the press is going to have a field day with this. And indeed, they did. Uh, and I mean, this I remember seeing Al Roker talking about this. I'm like, oh, damn, this is this is going to hit the fan soon, isn't it? And indeed it did. When people realized, you know, maybe you should actually look at the study before you talk about it. But here's the thing. People don't look at the study before they put out a press release. They want to rush to press. So before sharing that thing on your news feed, go look at the study. Just It's going to save you a lot of some asshole like me being like, fake news! It's a hoax! Because I'm, I'm always that person, and I've lost so many friends that way. Uh, but there are more stories like this. Sometimes science journalism takes things out of context uh, for a better story. And man, people like me who have you know, once upon a time in a skinnier life run a marathon, we wish this was true. Oh, yes. Who, who saw this and had their, it's always Aunt Gail. Their Aunt Gail was like, you know, all I need to do is drink my, my glass of red tonight, and it's totally fine. It's just as good at the gym. I read it on the news. I read it on the news. Don't you lecture me. You're just a health nut. Everyone had that Aunt Gail, I swear to God. Mine's Aunt Rose, but still, I know someone else had an Aunt Gail. But the, uh, the glass of red wine equivalent to the hour at the gym. Who saw this? I know y'all saw this. I love this one. I love this one so much. Uh, mainly because coupled with the chocolate study, it made us all think these people were health nuts. <laughs> oh, loved it so much. But whenever you see this, what do you do? When you see something crazy like this, what do you do? Exactly, you find the original study. And the original study said nothing about drinking a glass of wine every night for an hour at the gym. So, uh, yes, indeed, resveratrol, uh, one of the components of wine, one of comes in grapes, it's got, it's got some interesting properties to it. And this researcher, uh, Jason Dick, he was trying to figure out if it could have some interesting properties to help people who were, uh, who were unable to exercise or who exercised uh, less, you know, either due to old age or due to injury. And indeed, resveratrol could give some of the cardiovascular, uh, um, you know, uh, benefits that you got from exercise. You had to get the amount of resveratrol that you got from 100 to 1,000 bottles of wine. <sighs> I'm, I, you know, like, I, I'm just saying, I don't know if there's enough aspirin for that hangover. <laughs> or, you know, I, I just, there, too many jokes, too little time. Moving on, just check the primary sources. That's all I'm saying. It's gonna save you a lot of, a lot of hangovers. Moving on. If an article. It's ex exactly still again the 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 gym. It's 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 good for you. I mean, wine maybe too, but I'm gonna say like it's it's still alcohol. It's still a carcinogen. That's. That's all I'm gonna, moving, that's why I love organic wine. It makes me laugh so much. Like, organic carcinogen. 
This is, this is a failure in advertising, or it's a win in advertising. I don't know. It's why I don't work in advertising. But uh, moving on. So how many people have seen this thing that says studies say, and they look through the article, and you cannot find a hint of a fucking study anywhere? I'm like, ha, <laughs> where is this? Mm, it's, you just want to find the author and be like, could you, find, could you send me one, or is this just a vague studies, like the universe, kind of like when people are talking about astrology. But uh, I've seen a few of these, and I went through and I just Googled studies say to see what would come up for articles. And these were some of the first studies that came up. And I looked through them, and these were, these were fun. Uh, white wine, now there is, there, now two of them have some kind of preliminary things, and one of them, not, nothing whatsoever. Um, so apple cider vinegar helps uh, blood sugar body fat, studies say. Now the thing with apple cider vinegar is that for about the first two hours after you ingest a certain amount of it, I think it was like a couple tablespoons, it will slow the absorption of blood sugar marginally. But after those two hours, you get the entire hit of blood sugar. So it's not going to, uh, it really doesn't have any discernible effect overall on weight, on blood sugar. Uh, if you're a person who's not... Um, diabetic, your blood sugar is pretty uh, stable anyway. And if you are diabetic, you need your fucking insulin. <laughs> like, you shouldn't be getting uh, your health advice from an article on CNN anyway. You should be getting it from your doctor. It's an interesting little piece of information, something that researchers might want to keep looking into. But this is not a thing that you should be like, well, I'm just going to, it's, you know, I just ate I'm, and I'm diabetic. Time for my, time for my shot of apple cider vinegar. But again, there was no uh, study showing that it helped you know, like it says it helps blood sugar and body fat, but it doesn't say that it, what it helps with, it doesn't say it reduces them, it doesn't say it manages them. It's a little nebulous, really. Uh, let's see, white wine may lead to increased cancer risk, study says. I believe this one was done in Australia, and somehow white wine, uh, when you were somebody who, uh, it, it, white wine had drinkers had a slightly higher risk of melanoma. And I'm like, Perhaps people are drinking wine and staying out in the sun more, because that's a thing that you do. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know, I've, I've been, around, been around people when they're drinking. You make bad decisions, like not reapplying your suntan lotion. <laughs> just, just a guess. But this one, this was, this was my favorite. Studies say the season you were born in dictates your life. Now, there were, there were certain habits they were trying to say justified why this was true. And it's like, you know, you're born in this season, so these things happen according to, you know, it's more uh, habitual. But, like, there's studies say the season you were born in dictates your life. And that would, that would make me think people who were born around the same day of the year have similar habits to me. And the two celebrities that were closest to uh, in birthday to me were O.J. Simpson and Bill Cosby. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this one to bed. But speaking of something that's more of a correlation than a causation thing, whenever you see correlation and causation used interchangeably, there might be a little bit of fake news. Now, yes, correlation can be used to be a launching point uh, for research, but correlation is kind of, it's not always helpful. It's not always a good, good way to. To, to base your ideas for science. And to talk about this, I have to talk about something very serious and vexing in our time. It might be the most serious thing that we're going to talk about today. I am, of course, talking about Nicolas Cage. <laughs> because I don't know about you, but the number of people who have drowned by falling into a, a swimming pool, it seems to go up when there are more Nicolas Cage films. And Florida men who slipped and tripped to their deaths also there's a strong correlation to Nicolas Cage films. I believe this proves my point that Nicolas Cage, he's up to some shit. <laughs> I mean, that's, that is the same uh, idea that anti-vaxxers go with. Oh, you thought that was what I was going to say the first time. I'm just saying. But the thing with, with anti-vaxxers and the thing with this whole uh, big, messy thing with the vaccine debate is that, number one, we do kind of know the cause of autism at this point. It does appear to be genetic. Uh, and the other thing is that it does seem that there's a lot of fear that gets wrapped up into this. If you can take somebody who's afraid uh, and vulnerable and plant an idea in their head that it's something that they can control and yell at, uh, and th that's a very easy fear to plant. So if we can get away from this, 
Uh, we, can maybe, we can maybe wipe out polio and maybe stop letting people who are, uh, who, who are uh, handling autism you know, not get measles. That'd be great. But I think there's a lot of demonizing people who are autistic, and I think that's something we should get away from. But again, we need to wipe out fear and vulnerability, and that's a way that we can, <laughs> that's something that, that's going to be a lot harder, but knowledge is, is going to help us a lot more uh, than, than anything else with this. Another place where we see, uh, where we see a lot of, <laughs> of correlation and causation uh, being mixed up is within, uh, is within the, the uh, artificial sweetener, uh, I don't know if I want to call it a debate, but a little bit of, a little bit of online yelling, because I am, I, I'm, I've, as, as has been mentioned earlier, I have a, a deep and abiding love for my Diet Coke, and I kept drinking it all through my 90 pound weight loss. Who knows, maybe I would have lost another 90 pound, no, just kidding, uh, who kn I maybe would have lost more without it, according to the interwebs, it's yelled at me a lot about this, but these two uh, paragraphs are from the same article, uh, and it was very strange that there's, you know, one side of the saying, soda drinkers tend to be more sedentary, uh, and, you know, they're, and, and eat more calories, and on the other side, they're kind of trying to blame the diet soda uh, for uh, all of these, you know, awful health effects. So is it the diet soda, or is it maybe the, the you know, the extra value meal that they had with the diet soda? I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm gonna lean value meal, gonna, I'm leaning that way, but just, just my guess, because over time, uh, over tons of studies I've seen, it always seems to be a correlation thing, not a causation thing, but I'm still open-minded, and I'm still open to seeing data that shows that it's, it's a causation thing. Haven't seen it yet. Uh, but moving on, we do see, seem to see these more from bloggers and more from, uh, from people that are trying to find a place to plant their anger than anyone else. But I don't try to, I do try to get my information from, uh, from medical sources and from bloggers because they don't seem to be great sources of anything other than fake news. Now, I love these pictures because they're a great example of news you can't trust. So this is from my friend Jennifer on her website, uh, and she took these as examples of, of why you shouldn't trust uh, before or after pictures. How far apart do you think these two pictures were taken in terms of time? Minutes, minutes exactly. These were, these were taken five minutes apart. She is a few months postpartum. She also does, she's kind of a fitnessy person, and she was trying to demonstrate how with, you know, lighting effects and different poses uh, and with a filter, you can, you can make yourself, you too can have six-pack abs. Uh, but she later found uh, those pictures being used on a diet pill ad, <laughs> which, which seemed to which seemed to show that her ability with Photoshop works quite well. Uh, but, I mean, that's, that's part of, I love that because it kind of shows you can't trust uh, what you see for these amazing before and afters. Uh, you know what works for before and after? Cutting calories and going to the gym, and those two things fucking suck. I'm just, I'm just saying, S someone who's been there before, it's hard, it's not glamorous, it takes a lot of sweating and it's gross, but you know, it, uh, it's more permanent than sucking in it and changing the lighting. Uh, but there's no such thing as, whenever you see something saying there's a breakthrough, or we've cured this with, uh, with, with, um, lavender oil, which apparently, according to the news right now, causes uh, men to grow breasts, which if, if that's what you're into, cool, get some lavender oil, it's a thing that works, uh, but, you know, this is, uh, whenever you see something on, uh, you know, Dr. Oz, which has been shown to sell over, what is it, 50, it's like 54% of the studies are either not, fact things that they present on there are not factually based or, you know, questionable. Uh, you can't trust those. If these were huge medical breakthroughs, they'd be on the six o'clock news or the British Medical Journal, not uh, on, a m on, a, on a mommy blog's website. And a lot of times people will ask me, you know, what harm can this do? You know, if you don't like it, just don't read it. Uh, and this is, this is something I bring up a lot. This is from, you know, the first year that I had a website, and there was this one blogger, Modern, uh, Modern Alternative Mama, uh, who, like, she doesn't even keep Benadryl in her house because she's so against having any real medicine. Uh, for, for the people in the back who might not be able to see, um, a reader asked, my two-and-a-half-year-old unvaccinated daughter has just tested positive for pertussis. We're going on week four, so antibiotics won't work. Just looking for ideas to help her. We give cod liver and elderberry da uh, daily. Any other ideas? Um, 
Yeah, there, I see some people face palming. Uh, so from, from my sock account, because uh, of course I have a sock account, so I replied, first go to the hospital, there are doctors with real medicine there, uh, then go to a police station and turn yourself in for child abuse, you're a monster. <laughs> I, look, I, I, I'm, I'm a kind person, but I'm not always nice. <laughs> There's slight difference between the two. But, you know, there is a real thing happening when we propagate fake news and w when we enable people to send out bad information. So it's, I, 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 can't, I can't abide with people saying, well, we have, to, we, we, we have to let people have their opinions. No, you get your own opinions. You do not get your own facts. And vaccines work. And this is something that, that we don't get to say, let somebody have their opinion on it, because this is actually harming people. There is a child that coughed their lungs out, and who knows what happened to them, uh, because we said, let people have their own opinions on it. That's not an opinion. That's, uh, th that's something that, that harms people. I got... <laughs> Be, be, I, I don't know if it was because my uh, I, I, because I forgot to get a booster or not, but I got whooping cough as an adult. I dislocated a rib <laughs> as an adult with lungs that were capable of running a marathon at the time, and I was on two prescription anti-cough meds. Please vaccinate. I can't I can't press that home enough. Uh, but moving moving on, uh, if a website claims. <laughs> You, kn you knew Alex Jones had to make an appearance. <laughs> uh, but you know, there are a lot of sites that will claim they're, they're the only accurate source of information. They want you to get deeper into their little, into their little bubble. And the more uh, you see this, uh, I mean, it's the horseshoe theory at work. You see this with places like uh, with Infowars, with Natural News, which somehow look a lot more <laughs> like each other all the time. But if they tell you don't go out and fact check, don't go out and look at other places uh, for info, there's probably something wrong with their information. I tell people, please fact check me all the time. And I've gotten, I've gotten a correction in the middle of a talk before. That was, thanks Eugenie Scott for that one. Uh, but you know what, here's the thing. If, you, if people tell you this is the, uh, the only place, or if they have, if all of their citations, and you can see this often on Natural News' website, all of their citations are just natural news, natural news, natural news, info wars, natural news, green med info, natural news. That's not a good sign that they're looking outside of their bubble uh, for any information. Uh, there's, there, there is something to be said for staying a little bit with the mainstream, and it's, I, it's, aw, oh, there's, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying the Flintstones is not a documentary. Uh, but you know, there are some traits that we look for with conspiracy theorist websites. They're, the more and more they say uh, you have to go alternative, the more that you, uh, the, the more that they try to say that, that the mainstream narrative is, is a lie. And of course, this is, it's hard to say this right now because the, the voices coming out of the White House press booth are kind of lying to us, but uh, it's, it's hard to, uh, it, it's, it's, very, it's very strange when for a long time I've said, you know, you can trust the regulations and they're rolling back regulations. So I'm in a very, I'm in a bind at the moment <laughs> with how I talk about these things. But, you know, a lot of times whenever you hear on conspiracy theorists websites, you can't trust them and they can't see who they are. If they can't identify the people that they're uh, fighting with, if they, can't, uh, if, if they can't identify sources, if they can't give you studies, or all of them are from, uh, or if they have studies, but they, uh, they're citing things that they can't uh, actually explain, or their experts are all from their own labs and the labs aren't certified anywhere. These are all really good ways to look at a place and go, this isn't for real. Like Natural News has their own lab and Mike Adams is not a scientist. So these are, these are good ways to look at something and go, maybe I shouldn't take their information. Uh, let's see, this is one thing that I love. So right after, uh, right, right after the Trump administration took over, did anyone see all the different like alt, uh, uh, Twitter accounts that showed up a lot of like there were a lot of you know rogue uh, NASA and alt accounts and I, I started following this one because I was amused by a few of the tweets and then I'm like I don't think this person actually works in the White House <laughs> for some reason because they every time that they came up with you know there's this big story that no one's covering I'm like I'm gonna Google to see if I can find information on this story and every single time you know they said there's this the story that's going on that no one's covering, I always could find the story from like at least a few hours before they tweeted about it. <laughs> so whenever someone says, you know, the mainstream media is not paying attention to this, 
there's always, you know, it's, it's always in the mainstream media. It's always, there's, there tends to be a report about it. Uh, it's just maybe there's something else going on. Like, it's, I, I'll see this fairly frequently um, that, you know, I'll have friends, you know, post like an article from the Washington Post and say, why isn't anyone talking about this? I'm like, you just posted a thing from one of the biggest papers in the country and said no one's reporting the, do you not, you don't see, okay. But, you know, it's, there is uh, a lot of times when people say the mainstream media is ignoring it, they're not, it's just not a lot of people are reading it. <laughs> Sorry, people don't care about your pet bullshit. <laughs> So that is, you know, sometimes things don't get reported on and that's legitimate, but uh, if somebody claims that they have the big story, you know, if it was real, bring it to a reporter. There's, there are plenty of ways to get stories out at this point. But my, my biggest piece of advice, if you are trying really, really hard to make sure that you are, are uh, bullshit and f fake news proof, treat every single day and every single website and every single corner of the internet like it's International Fact Checking Day, which is coming up very, very soon. Uh, you have to treat every single claim like you're in the lab and somebody is trying to get results out uh, to, to, uh, to, to an agency that's going to make or break their career. Look for good sources. Make sure that you're not uh, falling for something that's just, <laughs> that, that is going to uh, destroy uh, your, you know, your, your I mean, I look at everything and go, any website that I, uh, that I post to Cybabe could destroy my credibility. And I, I treat every last thing like I'm sending my results to the EPA because that's what I used to do uh, when, I, when I worked at a pesticide lab was I had to send results off to, uh, to people who, who had a much higher pay grade than me. But you know, most, uh, you know, most hypotheses are gonna be wrong. You have to treat the internet accordingly and this is gonna keep you uh, safe in the long run. But there's, there's no reason not to ask, you know, is this true? Do you have a source? Uh, when you see things on the internet, it's gonna keep you a little bit more proof from fake news. But I, I yeah, but that poor kid, he's been, I, 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 feel, I, I feel sorry for him because he's just been memed mercilessly over the internet. But, you know, every, it, it's, the internet's never gonna be safe from, from bullshit, from, fake news from, it's just, keep, but you can safeguard yourself from it. So work accordingly. It's, this is one of the earliest memes that came, uh, came up on my uh, Facebook forever ago when I was, when Cybabe was starting and everyone was like, oh, there's, you know, are you sure the food supply is safe? It's like, yeah, we're living longer and healthier lives. Once upon a time, we, we didn't get hit with chronic dise diseases. We got hit with acute diseases and the diseases that we live with for a long time now, they used to kill us right away. Like my brother has lupus. Uh, and if you were diagnosed with that in the 50s and 60s, you lived for five years from the time you were diagnosed. Now you live for a long, healthy life. Well, healthy-ish. But, you know, it's, these were, we always had chronic diseases. We always had the same things that we live with chronically now. It's just we didn't live with them before. We died with them. So now there are things that we're doing well. We're doing better. Uh, but don't buy into the fear, and you're going to get through a lot of the bullshit and the, fa and, and the things that are just fake news online a lot easier. Um, there's and a lot of times you'll see people say, you know, doctors don't know everything. There are things that come at you on the Internet that are new. I try to take a, a little step back and go, has somebody already debunked this? Has, already, has somebody already looked at this? Is this a new thing or is this just new to me? Uh, and that's kind of easier way than going, whoa, whoa this, is this new way of somebody, somebody has brand new research showing me that vaccines are probably killing me right now. It's like, nah, somebody probably just stumbled across another bullshit site is, is more than likely the case. Uh, but you know, I'm open to I'm open to being wrong, but I kind of look at all the bullshit on the internet now and with a grain of salt because they've continually the things that have tried to the, the things that people have tried to be alarmist with they tend to keep being debunked over and over again and it's kind of you know it's kind of re jumbling of, of the same types of bullshit uh, and last but not least. Treat the, the internet like infinite monkeys and infinite typewriters. Maybe you'll get the works of Shakespeare. Maybe. More than likely, you're going to get Donald Trump flinging poo. But if we can, 
But if we can teach fifth graders how to fact check, we can surely do this as adults who are concerned with facts and who want a, uh, a slightly more, a slightly, tr to, to steal a Colbertism, we can have a slightly truthier internet. And I think that we can be a part of that. Thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> All righty then. So, uh, I think, do we have time for QA? Yeah, I, I'm, right. I'm awesome. here. Cool. Okay, so we're going to do things a little different because there's a lot of people here and I want to walk around with a microphone handing to people. So, if you have a question, I'm here. Line up right back here. Also, Yvette will be able to see you. Uh, and then you can just ask your questions. So, yeah. I mean, you can just yell at me too. I'm here. Please don't yell at them. We, we need okay. order. I order lied. is important. Order. Okay. What's your opinion on Dr. Oz? <laughs> My opinion on Dr. Oz is not positive. Uh, so I, it's. Uh, my opinion on him is twofold. One is that he is a very good cardiothoracic surgeon, and if I needed cardiac surgery, uh, I would trust him to do that. Uh, but if you, uh, but he doesn't get to invite his Reiki specialist. He actually has a Reiki specialist in the OR. His Reiki specialist is not fucking invited. Uh, so I think that's that's pretty clear. Yeah. Uh, but there's a. I think it's it's. Um, this is also the reason why Oprah doesn't get to run for president, because she introduced us to Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, uh, Jenny, McCar well, Jenny McCarthy and her lovely uh, jubblies were already out there, but she also gave Jenny McCarthy's anti-vax bullshit uh, a, a platform, and that's a problem. So I'm just saying Dr. Oz was the, uh, was the gateway drug to all these other people. So there's my opinion on Dr. Oz. I've got two questions. I guess the first one is, um, do you know of any 2,000-year-old texts that you would consider fake news? <laughs> I, I do know of at least one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the, no, the, the real question is, um, how do you make a living doing this? What, what do you practically do? Mostly killing kittens. <laughs> no. um, so it's, I, I do get paid to write at a few different websites, uh, mm -hmm. and I, every so often I, I drain the lifeblood of the skeptic movement, and, ha and, and people are kind enough to pay me to talk. Uh, but I also do corporate talks as well. I see. Thank you. Monsanto has not actually paid me a cent ever, just to, just to clarify. Like, and unlike Kevin Fulta, when I say Monsanto no, has never paid, no, Mon that. Monsanto never actually paid him. Uh, but... No, I've never accepted a dime from uh, directly from any of the big uh, corporations. So let me clarify. I am a paid spokesperson for Splenda, so you clearly can't trust a word I say about it then. Uh, but if anyone has questions for me about that, I will ha be happy to uh, answer that. So because I, I get that that's a I get that that's a very strange thing. <laughs> so, but moving on. One of your slides up there indicated a uh, trusted we uh, trusted sources like PBS and New York Times and WAPO and, and a few others. And in my opinion, I don't trust anybody anymore. Um, I think everybody has an agenda and it, it's really difficult to, to dig out the truth from anybody. You want to make a comment on that? That is no. That's that is an understandable point of view. And even with those sources being trusted, I still fact check them. So you can have your sources that you trust. Like when I put them in the trusted category, I don't mean I trust them and everything they say is is. I was about to say Bible, but haha, <laughs> wrong crowd for that. Um, you know, I I don't mean I trust them and everything they say is is considered to be factual as soon as I open their uh, as, as open because we open papers anymore. As soon as I click on their links. Uh, I mean, you know, I trust them and they're, you know, they still get fact-checked. So they're sources that I, I consider, um, I consider that they, uh, like, because I mean, I write for the outline and that's my, you know, that's my, my home. They, they, they keep my rent paid, which is so nice of them. But I also know the process that we go through at the outline before we put out, like the article uh, that we wrote on David Avocado Wolf, uh, we had to go through four editors, uh, uh, a fact checker, and two lawyers uh, before that got out there. So I trust that some of the publications like that, like the ones that I listed off, I know what they have to do to get certain types of articles out and how, 
uh, careful their editing and fact checking is. But I also know that they have opinion sections uh, where I go, eh, this isn't worth the bandwidth that it's taking away from pornography. Uh, so, <laughs> so you, I was about to say, it's, there's, I come as advertised science and dirty jokes. Uh, but there's, like, I, I know when someone, like, there are going to be times when I disagree with their opinions on things and disagree with their presentation of facts. Like, they've done, there are definitely articles in, in both the New York Times and WAPO that I go, are you, who, who approved this piece of, why is this editor still working for you? But, uh, you know, like, in general, I think that they are aiming to get it right. Uh, and you, and at some point you have to go, we have a common basis for reality. And that's like, like, I don't feel like I have, like at one point, I felt like Fox News maybe, maybe had a common basis for reality with the rest of us. And I don't feel like they have that anymore, which I, I'm sad to say that. Like, I think if you went back to, like, I don't know, it's, it, at this point it seems like it was before my memory of what, of, of the polarization of news. Uh, but like, I don't feel like, like at this point, Fox News is so far off the grid with what it presents it, that it doesn't seem like that anymore. But I feel like when I read like New York Times, WAPO, a handful of those others, like I feel like even if they miss sometimes, they're hitting far more often than they're missing. And that's what you you have to look for with the news source because you know they're they're not a monolith. They're a collection of editors. They're a collection of writers. And you're not gonna they're they're not gonna get it 100% of the time. So you know still have the, have your thinking cap on, fact check them, keep them honest, and if you don't like something that they write or you think that they miss something, send them a letter. You can, you, because I mean, the, you, we're a part of how this all works. We, we get to, to, to keep them honest, and that's, that's a really good part of being skeptics who care about facts. So, but it is a good observation, like how do we, uh, how, how do we interact with the news when it's not being, when we don't think we can trust it, so. Oh, yep. Hello. Howdy. Uh, on average, would you say that Wikipedia is more or less reliable than just, you know, opening a paper or a random book? Ooh, how would I, how would I classify Wikipedia's uh, reliability? Wikipedia is as good as the, as the editors that work on it. So, like, we all... Uh, a lot of us know uh, Susan Gerbic, who do, who she's our our our, love, our, our much beloved Wikipedia um, and she does some really good work trying to keep it honest and and skeptic and get good information in there. But there are times when I've caught uh, misinformation in Wikipedia, and I I don't think when it gets in there now because it's gotten better. They've they have editors who are working on it constantly. Um, but I mean, I have, uh, I mentioned earlier, I have my uh, headache, and I looked up, because I was trying to find more information on it, I uh, looked up, you know, the type of headache I have. It's a really rare one called Slunk Syndrome, uh, and it said there are only 50 uh, logged cases in medical history. I'm like, I am not that special. <laughs> there's, there's no way. I'm like, my mom thinks I'm special, but medical history should not think I am this special. So I looked it up. And what it said in there was, you know, and what, what they meant by that was that there were 50 cases that had been written about, not that there had been 50 cases, uh, ev you know, there, there weren't just 50 people. <laughs> I'm like, I've met at least three, like there can't just, be, but I mean, I think that uh, a good way to use Wikipedia as a resource is go through and look at the links that are in Wikipedia. And that's, that's kind of how I treat Wikipedia is, because I mean, I use Wiki as a resource for uh, you know, for my articles, but I go through and grab the links from it. So it's, I think it can be a good resource, uh, but you know, go and find the primary sources in it, and that's a really, really great way to to use it. But that's a really good question. Thank you. Hi there. Howdy. I want to lead by saying that I'm not an anti-vaxer. However, I read things on the internet. And so, <laughs> when, when have you started this habit, sir? Uh, yeah, it's it's a problem. So <laughs> I just ran recently across. An so article. you're saying you read the internet for the articles, huh? <laughs> well, among other things, I'm not saying it's <laughs> the only thing I do. But at least in this case, it was an article, and this guy actually was suggesting that there is evidence that vaccines, particularly aluminum adjuvants. Oh dear. So, okay, so fine. You know, I'm a skeptic, and I look at this, and he's giving us specific citations with links. So I follow a link. I follow all the links, actually. 
And they're, they go to what looks like, to me, who has experience reading journal articles, real journal articles. You know, uh, this one is from a, a journal called Lupus, for example, from 2012. So it says, mechanisms of aluminum adju adjuvant toxicity and autoimmunity in pediatric populations. And it's got an abstract, an introduction, it's got citations at the end, the big list of all the, the citations, and it's like, well, I guess I could go to the library and see if there really is this article in a journal called Lupus, but just from this short one and several others that are in this article that all go to re what, what certainly look like may real I journal articles. May I recommend looking at the article's impact factor? I don't know what that means. So look, so there are a couple of ways you can judge if an article is a, or if a journal is a quality journal, um, by which I mean like if other uh, articles are cited, or if other uh, journals are citing articles from this journal, if other uh, publishers consider this publisher to be a reputable source of information. Because, I, I mean, impact factor isn't everything. Uh, you, but it is a it is a decent little yardstick uh, to see if there is if there is some reputability to to this because there are s I, I I apologize for interrupting you but there is uh, but when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to anti-vax stuff at this point I've I've yet to see anything especially with the aluminum uh, questions because aluminum it's it's quite literally like if you've ever taken a an, an antacid you've had far more aluminum than you'll get in all of your vaccines combined. <laughs> so there's, I, I'm, this is something that I've seen quite a bit, but if you go, uh, just have a look at the journal that you're looking at um, and type in the name of the journal and impact factor. You can even find it on, um, on the website for the journal more than likely. And if you're, and I mean, there's like the, the impact factor for like, this, it'll vary wildly uh, from journal to journal, but like the British Medical Journal uh, and the New England Journal of Medicine, they're like, they, they were quite high up there in terms of uh, their impact factor. One of them was, I, I think last year or the last two years combined, it was something like 50. And I've seen like the journals that, there are journals that have an impact factor of zero to two <laughs> that, uh, that are trying to, that are claiming they're in the same field. And I look at it and go, if you're, if you're, uh, if you have an impact factor you have to dig for, uh, it's, it's probably an indicator that no one, that you're not producing quality work. Uh, and I mean, there are places that try to pr present themselves as being more high quality or uh, having better, uh, more prestigious work by making their name sound a lot, you know, sound like a real medical journal. Um, there, here was an interesting one. Like right now I'm working, I'm doing a new, a hot new investigation. I'm really excited about this. Uh, there's, if you've seen ads on Facebook for this thing called the Bionic Gym. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. They basically are putting like these electrical pads onto your legs and shocking you and claiming, you know, like all of those different, you know, like shocking ab things from the 90s that they're gonna make you lose weight and be in great shape. Like one guy claimed he trained for a marathon with it, but he's like, oh, but I ran it on my own and no one saw me, but totally just take my word for it. I'm like, you're full of shit and I'm gonna nail you. Um, this is my favorite part of my job. Uh, it's just making people wish they hadn't lied to me. Um, but this, uh, but here's the thing, I went through and looked at all the journals that he'd published in, because they're like, we have peer-reviewed studies. I'm like, really, which peers where? Uh, and one of the journals they'd published in, they'd written on their site that it was the British Medical Journal Case Reports. I'm like, really? So I looked up and it was called the BMJ Case Reports. The name of the journal is just BMJ Case Reports. And I'm like, all right, so you're already took it and lied a little bit about, about the name of it to make it say you were British Medical Journal, which, I mean, they're from the same parent company, but, the British Medical Journal case, or the BMJ case reports, I looked at their website, and number one, much lower impact factor than British Medical Journal. Number two, they said, we're looking for junior doctors and medical students to publish their work here so you can get used to publishing. Uh, and so that you can, and the other thing is case reports and case studies, they're one to two, like they're, they're, they're a study of one person. Like in order to, these people are trying to get a medical device onto market. You need large scale studies of a statistically significant sampling in order to get this thing to market. So I'm trying to write an expose on them, which is fun. But uh, back to the point of, um, of good and bad journals, 
you know, look up the journal to see if it's written in a decent one. I do have um, a, a little, uh, I think I have one entry in my blog uh, going back, a couple of blog entries back I can show you after, I, I don't remember the name of the blog entry off the top of my head, but that goes into impact factors a little bit uh, and that talks about how to judge a quality journal or not. Uh, can I have a follow up? So what's the, what's the, the, the uh, range or uh, spectrum of imp impact? What kind of numbers am I looking for? Uh, it fits, I mean, here's the thing, it depends on the field that you're in, if it's gonna be, uh, it's, well, what's, here's a question, what's the impact factor? This is around two to two and a half. New England Journal of Medicine says 72. New England Journal of Medi Medicine is 72. 72, well, so I guess lupus doesn't really have a lot of impact factor. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I mean, here's the thing, impact factor is not the only thing that you can judge a, uh, a journal on, because there are some entire fields that only have that the highest uh, journal in the field only has an impact factor of like three. But if you're in medicine and you have a quality journal, your impact factor should be a little higher because this is a medical thing. You know, like it's if you're putting out quality work, you would expect more people to cite your stuff more often. Oh. Cancer Center that has uh, a list of uh, basically a percentile list of impact factors and an impact factor of greater than 10 puts you in the top 1.7% of all journals apparently. Uh, if you can believe MD Anderson Cancer Center, which I feel like is a good source. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust big cancer. Are you satisfied? But I mean, okay. but let's. How about, I mean, it's a really complicated question how to judge a, uh, a quality journal, but I've yet, to, a lot of times you'll see this with the anti-vax things. They'll take things out of context. They'll find journals that show one in, uh, component of a vaccine without showing uh, an entire impact, the, the entire vaccine itself. Like there's, there are lots of things to discuss in this. I'll, I'll plop down and have a look at it because um, it's, it's hard to judge from over here, but we'll chat, we'll chat a little bit more up about this soon, so. I'm looking at this last slide, and I'm not getting the pun, and I'm very sad about that, and I don't want to ask everybody in the audience <laughs> so for help on that, so please. So, so H2O2 is the formula for hydrogen peroxide. As, as I'm a chemist, I'm just gonna leave it right there. H2O2 should not be consumed by humans. However, a uh, good little bit of trivia, if you have a dog that has ingested something that they really shouldn't ingest, about like two, like depending on the size of the dog, a couple mils of hydrogen peroxide will make them vomit and get rid of the thing that they shouldn't have eaten. Uh, talk to your veterinarian about that though, because I shouldn't be giving you veterinary advice because I'm not a veterinarian, but that's a, that's a thing. So just wanted to. Hmm? Citations? <laughs> I think you should all fact check me. Exactly. See, I've trained you all. I was just saying the goal, goal of tonight accomplished. So move, moving swiftly onwards. Is there anyone else who has a question? If you, can, if you do, come on up. If you have any questions, do you still have another one? I have a, I have a comment, I guess, that, that this is something that I think is not particularly new. I mean, it, it's, it's really expanded recently with the internet. But um, when I was, it's, I think I've observed this happening gradually over my lifetime. When I was a, a teenager, 20 years old, I thought everything you heard on the news was pretty accurate or really seemed legitimate. Um, but then around the 1980s, I think, where or 70s, late 70s, 80s, is when I really started observing a, a change in the news media. You used to have, um, you know, Dan Rather came on the news and said something, he, that was legitimate and you could take it at face value and you heard the same information from other sources. And uh, so around 1986, the, um, the Chernobyl happened. The uh, newspaper, first day it reported, you know, like 10 people dead. And then the next day, the newspaper came out with saying 50 people dead, and the next day it was 200, and the next day it was 2,000 people were dying, had died, or were dying, or are going to die. And so the, the latter was an, apparently an estimate of not how many people had actually died, but were predicted to die 
uh, because of radiation exposure sometime later in their life, uh, maybe their lives are sh five years shorter than, than expected. Um, then in 1989, we had the earthquake here, um, in, and they, the headlines came up, 152 people confirmed dead in the Cypress structure, and it was, it turned out that was an estimate based on how many people were expected to be on the bridge. In actuality, 52 people had died, um, but they made this estimate and they, they just wanted to hype it up. 60 minutes around that time, uh, also switched to doing a lot more, the, the, the news show to a lot more of these kind of uh, advertisement or hype. You know, they are looking for a speaker stories. for next month. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, at that point is when I sort of stopped buying newspapers and believing what they said. And now, now this has just gradually increased and increased and gotten worse and worse. So um, it's not something that just started r really recently. No, but it has gotten worse and a little more transparent recently. And I think that with uh, the internet wrapping it up, I, I think that uh, the, uh, the accessibility and the ability for, uh, for uh, bad information to travel, uh, that's, and also our awareness of it, uh, and, and the fact that we have conflicting facts floating on a regular basis, that has changed people's perception and people's awareness of the fact that we have bad information floating on a regular basis. So I think the fact that we, we now know there's a problem uh, allows us to address it a little more directly. So it starts here in our underground layer. Somebody fact check me that we're not underground. <laughs> so, but thank you guys for coming to hang out.